Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, pastor. Father John Broby, associate pastor. Entrance Antiphon. Blessed indeed is he who ponders the law of the Lord day and night. He will yield his fruit in due season. We offer this Mass for Imelda A. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. On this day we celebrate the memorial of Saint Jerome, a man who is known to have said, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. For those moments, that we did not have time to study the word of God. Let us be sorry and ask for God's pardon and for his forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. Jerome a living and tender love for sacred scripture, grant that your people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by your word and find in it the fount of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Have you ever in your lifetime commanded the morning and shown the dawn its place? For taking hold of the ends of the earth till the wicked are shaken from its surface? The earth is changed as is clay by the seal and dyed as though it were a garment. But from the wicked the light is withheld and the arm of pride is shattered. Have you entered into the sources of the sea or walked about in the depths of the abyss? Have the gates of death been shown to you or have you seen the gates of darkness? Have you comprehended the breadth of the earth? Tell me, if you know all, which is the way to the dwelling place of light and where is the abode of darkness that you may take them to their boundaries and set them on their homeward paths? You know because you were born before them and the number of your years is great. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am of little account. What can I answer you? I put my hand over my mouth. Though I have spoken once, I will not do so again. Though twice, I will do so no more. The word of the Lord. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Where can I go from your spirit? From your presence, where can I flee? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I sink to the netherworld, you are present there. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. If I take the wings of the dawn, if I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall guide me, and your right hand hold me fast. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way.
Alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to them, Woe to you, Corazon! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented and sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You go down to the needle world. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Dearly beloved, as I told you on Monday, this week is the week of Job. Tomorrow we finish with Job and on Monday we move to Galatians. Now my dearly beloved, your homework this week was to read the 42 chapters of the book of Job. Today we read selected verses from chapter 38 and chapter 40. Now this passage that we have read is part of the long passage which spans from chapter 38 verse 1 to chapter 42 verse 1. And so when you take chapter 38 to chapter 42 verse 1, it is supposed to be the same passage. And it is God's response to Job's accusation or his charge of divine injustice against the innocent. I take that again. Job has a charge. And it is probably in a legal setting where in his charge... He is accusing God of divine injustice against the innocent. Now in this pericope from chapter 38 to chapter 42 verse 1, God is responding to this charge or this accusation of Job. Now in the book of Proverbs, chapter 8 verse 28 to 31, God is understood to be the divine architect behind creation who planned it and executed it. I take that again. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 28 to 31, God is understood to be the divine architect behind creation who thought through creation, planned everything, and executed it. Now, Job is skeptical. Job is, has a point against this position of Proverbs, that if indeed God is the divine architect behind all of creation, who has planned it and executed it, then I have a problem. Why will he allow lightning to destroy my property and kill my servants? Job chapter 1 verse 16. Again, why will he allow the storm to kill all of my children? Job chapter 1 verse 19. Now, this problem of Job is again compounded 
when in chapter 9 verse 16 and 17 he says if i summoned him he will not even listen to me can you imagine that job is saying that if i summon god god will not even listen to me rather he will cause the storm to make things worse that must be a very high profile case now god is going to respond and i am not too sure why the makers of the lectionary will skip verse 4 to 11 all the way to 12. now if you go back home please take your time with this background that i've given you with god as the divine architect of creation from proverbs chapter 8 verse 28 to 31 haven't understood this just read chapter 38 to chapter 42 verse 1 and then begin to think about god as the divine architect of creation the language in chapter 38 is very architectural i take that again if there are architects in this building you probably understand what is going on now let me take this reading and see how god is going to speak the language of architects verse 3 he says get up your loins like a man i will question you and you shall declare to me now verse 4 the language of architects begin where were you when i laid the foundation of the earth tell me if you have understanding who determined its measurements surely you know or who stretched the line upon it on what were its bases sunk or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling, swaddling band and prescribed boundaries for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no father and here shall your proud waves be stayed have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it it is changed like clay under the seal and it is died like a garment now this probably will inform you why david will why job will say i place my hands on my lips i will speak no more my dearly beloved in christ sometimes all of us like job will question the divine architect the problem is he is the only one who has the master plan i take that again he is the only one who has the master plan and it is precisely what job didn't know that god has the master plan he has the master plan of my life he has the master plan of your life he has the master plan of the world he has the master plan of everything happening and it is only the one who has the master plan who understands exactly where the world is going he is still in charge sometimes my dearly beloved like job we want to be in charge of the world we want to be in charge of our plans we want to be in charge of our lives but the divine architect says to all of us today just offer me your life offer me your future offer me everything that is yours i have the master plan however tall you think you are you can never see tomorrow true or false why worry god says submit 
your plans into my hands. And it will fit into my divine plan. Because I am the divine architect. Shall we rise in prayer? For our church and our mission to live as faithful disciples, may the Lord strengthen us in this holy work. Let us pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may the Lord impart upon them a spirit of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from racism or prejudice, may the Lord bring healing to their pain and justice to their oppressors. Let us pray to the Lord. For those of us herein gathered, may the grace of this sacrament transform us in the image of Christ's love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the departed, especially for Imelda R., for whom we offer this Mass, may the Lord in his mercy welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For our personal and private intentions, let us pause in the silence of our hearts. that we may submit our lives into the master plan of the divine architect. Let us ask our mother Mary to intercede on our behalf as we pray. Hail Mary. Blessed are thou amongst the women, and blessed is the fruit of the arm of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, hear our prayers this day and answer them according to your will. For we ask all of these through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word, following the example of Saint Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for us on the festival of Saint Jerome, you bid your church rejoice. So to be strengthened by the example of his holy life, 
teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that it will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks and broke it, and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For thus is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity to the Francis, our Pope, and William Johnson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Imelda, whom you've called her from this world to yourself. Grant that she was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in each of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sons, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and each in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, stir up the hearts of your faithful, so that attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow, and by following it, obtain life everlasting. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful weekend. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.